All right, folks. So, uh, you know, today I've been trying to look at the maps that we don't see all that frequently in our scene. This has been brought into our map pool this week. I think the first time maybe it's been brought into the map pool, but I could be very wrong. Um, we've got, oh, <laughs> it was going half speed. And I was very concerned here for a second. We've got uh, Loey the Legends, but honestly, very solid level as far as Loey the Legends are concerned. 831 ELO versus 832. And in the red, we've got Machado. I don't think this is the third baseman for the Padres, but maybe it is. Uh, it, it, who knows? But, uh, you know, four houses at the start here for Machado playing as the Tutans. Over here on the other side of the map, we have uh, Valencasla, 25. Valencasla is going for a barracks. Whoa, that is a super early military building here from Valencasla. And this rank is high enough where I think that this is somewhat thought out. You know, at the real depths of low elo, I think players just kind of do what feels right, but they don't have enough knowledge to know what's what's viable or not. You could, because the Incas start with the extra llama for a little bit of extra food, because your pop space is so high from the first house with the Incas, you can justify this, technically. But still, if it, it's going to be awkward to be able to afford militia right now, and we'll see. I just... A little bit surprised by that. The barracks start and the four house start. Not something I would have necessarily thought would happen at this high of rank. Now the map. This map is really tricky to play. Uh, one of my favorite maps, though. I have some great memories on this one. We've got very little golden stone on your hill. So you have four tiles of stone and four tiles of gold, but it is spread out on your hill. And then you need to expand to the lowland, thus the name of the map, to get access to more stone and gold. Uh, obviously, there's there's quite a bit of wood at the top. You also could wall yourself in and play very safe here at the top. But, like, being at the bottom of a hill in Age of Empires is dangerous because you're receiving more damage. You're also doing less damage when you fight up the hill. So this is kind of a risky spot to be in, in theory. Um, all right, so remember that time I said that blue could technically, like, get some value from the barracks? Well, blue now is going to need a house here in a second. And blue still doesn't have the wood for a mill or a lumber camp. We've never seen a militia. So that 175 wood has probably just made things a little bit more awkward here. But you know what, guys? It, you know, it's the straggler tree method, right? Uh, a lot of players at low elo still just prefer to chop the straggler trees. And they consider this free wood. Why spend wood for more wood when you could not spend the wood and get wood? That's maybe the logic here. So, cool, cool. Um... Anything else to talk about? Well, I mean, the Teutons and the Incas are both really good sieves, I think. Again, the Incas are extremely flexible. The extra pop space on the house, the free llama at the start. If, while it is a civilization that doesn't get access to horsemen, which is like a big part of Age of Empires, they basically can do everything to counter anything. They've got great monks. They've got great infantry, great archers. They have good counters to infantry with the slinger, which is unique to them. So if you like a sieve that has counters, the Incas are definitely one of those sieves. Um, I'm wondering if blue... Is blue going to bring in a boar? This is 800 elo. We're going to see boars get brought in, right? It's so funny. This start, I actually feel as though this Dark Age, as far as the building placement and where they have gone for resources and whatnot, feels like a 600 elo game. The thing that has been really consistent from both of them has actually been the, vill pro the, the villager production. That's been better than a 600 elo game. So, and that's like the key. Like if there was one tip I had to give you, one single tip, it's just create villagers all the time. Yeah, but T90, what about game not? Nope, 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 villagers. Yeah, but T90, what about? No, stop it. Just make villagers. Just, just make villagers. And like, don't wait to get the resources you need to get to the next stage. Wait till it happens naturally while producing villagers. That's kind of the tip. Because more villagers equals more resources that you can work with in the long run. Now, the way the map system works is there's a, a, the ability to favorite and then there's the ability to ban. And I don't know how often that's utilized. Maybe my Twitch chat can tell me uh, <clears throat> maybe my Twitch chat can tell me like how often you are banning and favoriting things. 
Because I, I could guess that for more casual players, they don't even know that if you right click the stuff that it changes it. So, you know, you would assume, though, that if we got Lowlands, that somebody picked this. Just don't know who that would have been here. All right. Blue going for the boar, walking it back to the TC, walking it back, walking it back, walking it back, walking it back. Good stuff. Brings it underneath the TC. Some people say they always ban Arabia. Okay. Ban Arena and Mega Random. Okay. Vivi Faye, what's your ELO? I could have sworn I just saw you in a game when I was looking for games. Are you around seven or 800? Because I thought I saw an account that said Vivi Fan. And I was like, that's interesting, Vivi Fan. And then I saw the name. I was like, ooh, it's not Vivi Fan. Oh, no, it was Vivian. It was Vivian. It wasn't Vivi Fay. My bad. So. Ar Arena and Nomads were bans from me. But, like, is everybody utilizing their bans? Or do a lot of you guys keep it all open? I feel like the majority of the player base probably uses a lot of the bans. Oh my goodness, holy house wall here. That is a lot of houses, Red. I mean, hey, you're going to need houses for pop space. You're going to want walls. So that is the logic here. It's not too bad. Which is a big commitment, obviously. Red also did locate the enemy here. Scouted the TC, scouted the mill, scouted the wood line, so good scouting. I don't think Red's going to necessarily rush. Hmm. The way blue brings in boars is interesting. Because, like, blue clicks with the whole group, but then clicks them all back. This exact action could happen if you just left these villagers here. And you use one villager to bring the boar back to the TC. But maybe she's scared. Maybe she needs the emotional support. Hmm. We'll see. T90, are you going to give us something to spend channel points on? Maybe. But for now, we don't have anything. We'll eventually consider it. Uh, but there's been too many things on my mind. Channel points are like super low on the on the priority list for me right now. <laughs> uh, when I'm home with family for like 10 or 11 days, I'll probably have some mornings with my laptop, you know, where I, I'm itching to do something, you know, and I could maybe look into some things there. So Tootin's very cheap farms, and the farm upgrade came in here, and it looks like Machado's going to farm away. Ooh, I feel like Machado is a very say, a very structured farm placer. Yeah, look at that. The houses are all kind of straight and boxy. There go the farms. Blue is walling up. Blue brought in both boars now. Blue's about to reach Feudal Age. Around a minute of idle TC time from both. But definitely, you know, balancing that economy is tricky here, and neither player really designing their builds around attack. Now we have a barracks, though, from Machado. Obviously, the barracks from Blue was there from the very start, so maybe Blue will do something more. So, we'll see. Uh, around the World Biker, thank you for the Prime. Around the World Biker, you cannot subscribe to me, though, and have me not ask, do you bike a lot? <laughs> Do you bike all around the world? Share us, share with us your experiences. Are you on a bike right now? Tell us more. Obviously, you don't have to. <laughs> but I'm curious. My dad uh, really likes to bike. He, uh, he watches the Tour de France every year as well. I remember watching the Tour de France back in the day. I don't really watch it these days, but it's pretty cool. There's going to be another barracks. Ooh, could we have, like, full Teuton infantry here yeah. in this game? Teutons have extra melee armor on their infantry. I, I feel like people who play with Teutons usually want to go infantry. But the knights are very strong as well. I have no clue what server this is on. So I can't answer that question without leaving the game. Is there a reason? I guess maybe the names might make you think they're from a certain location. 30 villagers for blue, 32 villagers for red. It's been pretty chill. We do have a lot of eagles in queue right now for blue. Blue really needs to think ahead is with the houses. Like blue has very few houses here. And, you know, with the Incas, like, if, if, 
if uh, Blue did this, Blue would never get population cap again. Like, that would be, I guess with the Incas, that would be 110 population space. Holy farms, Red. That's crazy. It is interesting how Red places the farms. So Red pre-places them before having the Vils. Are all the new villagers from the TC going to these farms? Is that the plan? It's like, do the work ahead of time and then set the rally point onto the farms. Let's see. Could be an option. Market blacksmith behind this. Stone mining upgrade coming in. Gold mining upgrade coming in. Yeah, it looks like new villagers go to the farms. Okay. So guys, what you can do though is you can just click villagers from wood to those farms and you'll get the wood still that they had in their hands. So I, I gotta have to say this because so many people don't know this. If you have a resource in your hands with a villager and you build a farm without dropping off that resource, whatever it is, stone, gold, food, wood, when the farm completes, you get the resources that were in your hands. And I see people, even at like 1600 rank, what they'll do is they'll like click to drop off the wood, then go to the farm. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. Uh, you just build the farm, you get the resource. And a lot of people think they're going to waste resources that way. It's it, it, it's weird, right? Because if you if you have like, let's say wood, and then you click the berries, if you click berries, the second they take the berries, you lose the wood. But that works for farms, and that works for mining camps, lumber camps, and mills. Also, how on earth did these eagles just get in here? Is there a hole? Oh, there is a hole. All right. Well, that's a lot of eagles. Luckily, Red had army prepared. Man at arms doing some work here, though. And I think if Red just makes a little bit more, Red will be completely fine here. Yeah, TCs, mining camps, mills, lumber camps, and farms. Correct. And I think that man at arm is going to be more than fine to just buy time for the other one to come forward. I thought there was another one. Oh, God, the town bell has been wrong. Oh, the other ones are here right now. This is good harassment, though. This this makes Machado a bit stressed. This puts, you know, Red just rang the bell and so much so much of the eco went idle, for example. Great job from Blue. Behind this, Blue's farms are looking pretty good. Blue actually dropping archery ranges over here, too. And the man at arms show up. Blue probably going to lose this entire attack, though. But this could be blue kind of baiting red into going, Oh my god, I can't stand the bell! It stresses me out. I'm sorry to get aggressive. Um, You know, maybe blue's thinking... <sighs> maybe, maybe blue is thinking that if the opponent makes a lot of infantry, that slingers can be made. We need. We definitely need a T90 Bell emote. We have more animated emote slots. We got to get that over the Christmas break. <laughs> the fact we don't have a Bell emote's wild. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, as we established before, the Incas get Slinger. Slingers are great against infantry. The ranges are already up, so I really like this from Blue. Red is gonna place new houses here to plug whichever, whichever houses had a gap here i think it's there but that is like really tricky it's because of the elevation change i've realized why people do the bell i used to think it's because people didn't know about how much inefficiency it adds but it's it's just because it's easy right it's just easy and it's like way less work to just click the button oh my god what the wait excuse me is there another hole? Oh <laughs> my god! It's poor Red! <laughs> this is horrible! This is just horrible, man. Somehow, there's a hole. Red probably even noticed that there was a hole there and thought if I place a house here, I'd block it. But then there's another hole because, again, it's because of the elevation. I feel so bad for Red right now. Anyways, Blue gets in again. And as the saying goes, you create your own luck, right? So blue is at least being aggressive. If blue were to be aggressive, blue would probably find some holes in... Or red would probably find some holes in blue's base. All right, here come all the man-at-arms. I'm just praying we don't hear a bell here. I have hit my, my limit for the bell rings. Scout was just auto-scout, by the way. Shout out to that, scouting the whole map. That's why the score leads here. 
And okay, is there a hole here? Now I think it's now I think it's blocked off. Eagles are trying to escape. Yeah, they can't escape. Okay, I was about to say. Watch there be a hole here. No way. No way! <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Red just learned a very valuable lesson. <laughs> we all just learned a very valuable lesson. House walls on hills? Uh-uh. No, don't do it. Okay, ring all the bells you want, people. But if there's any elevation nearby, do not rely solely on house walls. What in the world, man? Holy crap, that's three separate holes now. Okay, a blue gets away. And red just continues to drop more houses. It just feels like this is always going to go wrong. I do think that this seems safe now. But I don't trust it. <laughs> I don't trust it. Someone said, please build in straight lines. Red did. Like, this was a straight line. It, it, I, I Honestly, I can't be too critical of red. So blue's in Castle Age now. And blue is making slingers. And blue really knows what's up. You can see the difference here. This elo. Make decent amounts of army. The eco balance is pretty good. And Machado's just playing so defensive. And I mean, I'm really concerned here. Now, the Eagles are running this way. Machado sees this. If Machado can get, uh, like, knights and longswords, it could be good. There's still an opening here, but Red's kind of prepared for this. That villager wasn't told about this, though. And so that villager will go down. Second villager down for Red. Red has the villager lead, by the way. Red has produced villagers more consistently. If Blue is looking at something else, Blue will lose all these Eagles. Now, the Eagles are much better against longswords. Because they're Castle Age Eagles now. Or sorry, Man at Arms because they're Castle Age Eagles. But they still die. Nice cleanup from Red. Oh boy. Okay. So, let's see. Red is a big fan of houses. Okay, Red's dropping more houses. And Slingers are not very good against buildings. Eagles obviously are. The Slingers are currently just attacking a Palisade wall. And Blue's got more Slingers on the way. We do have the second town center for blue. It's not producing bills yet. We even have the third. I mean, obviously balancing that is really tricky. So a lot of this comes down to the fight. And then after the fight, maybe blue will, will focus on producing bills there. You can't go in here against this many slingers with just man at arms. Maybe if you get the longsword upgrade. But the damage that slingers do against longswords is insane. They actually buffed the slingers. I think they buffed the potential of the Slingers, right? I don't think their their base version's better. Uh, no, I think they get, like, an additional plus one against infantry now. Or, like, in one of the recent patches. I, I for, Apologies for not having it completely memorized. I remember seeing Slingers were buffed, and I was like, what? The slingers are always really good at one thing and one thing only, and that was against the infantry, and that's exactly what we've got here. Look how fast these swordsmen melt. The red... This is, it might feel awkward, but, like, Knight's a really good option here. Red's gonna go for Crossbowmen. Not necessarily the greatest thing with the Teutons, but it can be good against Slingers. So that could be fine. KD, pretty close. This is actually the closest game we've had today, guys. And this is gonna be in my last cast of Loyola Legends this year. You're not gonna see Loyola Legends for an entire year. Well, not exactly that, actually. You're gonna just... It, I'm talking about the new year, so... That means uh, a couple weeks. Obviously, on YouTube, we probably have more than enough stacked up. I don't know when this will hit, if it does. Last one tonight as well. No, I'm planning on doing more, but this game also might go on for 17 hours, so I don't know. Eco upgrades are pretty solid for Blue behind this. Blue also has secured some land in the middle. That's going to be the challenge here for Red. But Red's producing quite a few villagers and on three town centers here. So I think this game will go late. Bed of Roses is T90. Maybe T's at the hint tomorrow. Hmm. T's at the hint tomorrow. There's no hint tomorrow. Tomorrow you know. Starting tomorrow, no more announcements are announced. Anything that's ever announced or proclaimed from me is just straight, straight details from here on out. And there will be a whole string of things coming, but tomorrow's a big day as far as announcements are concerned. 
A little awkward. The long swords went down. The crossbows aren't fully upgraded. Micro sucks, right? Micro is hard. Still, though, blue's not going to win the game with this. Red's probably going to make more. But again, there's limited gold available here. Now, the fact that red auto scouted everything, though, is really nice. Red could, uh, in theory, come down here and take this gold, this stone. I think red isn't going to do anything else until this whole area is fully house walled. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, who wants to try and spot the holes with me again? <laughs> We're experienced now. <laughs> I don't trust this. <laughs> I don't trust it. I think this is one. Yeah, that is definitely one, right? Mm, this, I'm guessing no. This maybe. This no. This is, I mean, red is learning too. Look at blue stack these buildings across the middle. Blue's going to make a lot more eagles now. Okay. I'm sure we'll find out, guys. Man, knights would just be so much better. It's so much faster. The base stats of a knight is so much better than a longsword. It's like easier to control as well. I think people don't realize, like, slingers are insane against infantry. But they kind of suck against everything else. So, And the knights are good against eagles and then also against the slingers. So it would be a really good choice. No armor upgrades at all here for blue, though. So blue's got the right idea, but probably just didn't realize how important the armor is there. And red is 77 villagers with really good eco. Just needs more gold and stone secured. Blue actually has enough stone for a castle here. Blue also getting relic number four behind this. That is really impressive. I think it would make sense for blue, since you're not exactly winning these fights convincingly, maybe make a castle, something like here, just to protect the middle. It does, a forward castle would obviously be epic, but there is some risk with that. So still no bod canero for red. Blue just got the first armor upgrade. Red's got 35 on food, though. So red putting a lot of time and focus onto the eco behind all this. And again, KD is pretty close, right? Look at that. 46 to 46 right now. Look at the idle TC time for red. That's insane. It also explains, like, that's why red's fights are kind of meh, you know? But I forget if it was this game or at the start of this game or another game, but I was like, the most important thing is produce villagers all the time. All right, Blue, I... I kind of thought you might do this. I get what you're thinking here, my friend. You're thinking, let's let's deny resources from the opponent, but maybe do so with a little bit of control. <laughs> this is... You've got good vision on the middle. Could be a little bit better. Wait, you're going to build this with one villager? <laughs> Honestly, it might actually work. Because red has not shown any confidence moving out of these walls yet. One villager castle there. Okay. Well, like we said, red's not moving out. I think red's just content to sit here. And there goes red with the TC and then taking some of that gold. This is a great game, guys. This is a great game. I feel like... I gotta give the edge to blue in terms of, like, the army control and, like, the positioning and stuff. Like, thinking like that. Red is just really good at sitting at home and making lots of eco. It's just will Red have what it takes to be able to push the crucial positions later? I don't know. But, like, this gold is huge. Red hasn't gone for any offense. Red never went to Blue's base. Blue's base has been wide open. Red obviously auto scouted, but like never even shown me showed me any sign that there was any reactions on what was happening here. Red just thinks, how many houses can I place in this wall? How many villagers can I get to? And how many houses are actually been placed? Um, thirty-five. Sheesh. Full armor, full attack on these eagles. This is really bad with no without many long swords here. Again, Bod Canera is missing, so these units are now doing one damage a hit. Imp is on the way now. We we know Red's going to make some more long swords, most likely. And we know Red's going to ring that bell. Really shows you, like, Red does not seem to me like an extremely quick player. And, but, but yet Red 
Is that a solid rank? Because you can afford to take some losses if you've got a 30 villager lead. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. I mean, blue at this point it should just click the eagles all through red's e eco and just let the town bell do the work. Red actually fights back with villagers. <clears throat> Interesting choice. <clears throat> um, is making some pikes now. I mean, pikes will do a bit better than the crossbows have been. They're not necessarily a great counter, but it's something else to fight back. And <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. In the end, this will get cleared up. Uh, Red took some losses. Red still has a lead. And Red wants to place houses here. And actually some stone walls. Okay. Meanwhile, Blue is on the way to the Imperial Age. Blue has killed 13 villagers. Make it 14 villagers in this game. Has four out of the five relics. Is dropping TCs all over the stones and gold in the middle. And if one of my mods is around to maybe do a poll... I'm curious, who do you guys think will win this game? The player with the relics and the middle? Or the player with the house walls and the eco? I actually think it could be close. And here's the resources collected. Obviously a lot more gold for blue because of the relics and being in the middle. Here's the speed, by the way. Blue is a speed demon compared to red. Red is super relaxed. I think I have to lean towards blue because blue has the relics and the more middle control. And because blue is getting more upgrades. And blue also seems to have nice positional awareness. Another interesting castle here. Also, we are seeing Tootin Cav Archers. Ooh, that worries me for red. But hey, red's going to drop a castle here. This castle goes up. Blue could lose a lot of units to that castle. Those eagles are fully upgraded for castle age. Usually right before imp, you want to wait. But when you can take an engagement like this, you might as well take it. Now, what happens if you ring the bell? Oh, I thought that might happen. So some of the villagers building the castle actually hide in the TC like a coward. Well, it's okay. The castle will go up. Oh my god, he unrang the bell and re-rang the bell so the villagers would go in there. Everything's idle. Oh my god. Okay, but hey, 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 hey. It's fine. This is fine. T90 fine. Lots of arrow fire from the castle. Eagles go die. Eagles are expensive. And this isn't something that Red hasn't experienced before. This isn't new, guys. This isn't Red's first rodeo. There we go. We unring the ding. Blue, like... Blue is very tunnel visioned right now. And it's not necessarily bad. Blue's going to make trebs here and try and push this. But I am still curious. Like, you know, Blue obviously wins this game, I think, if the eagle raids come here. Right. This is an area Red is not prepared to defend. But if you're looking at Red's lack of upgrades, maybe, or, or even unit comp, I think it's, it's hard for Red to make the proper decisions because of the pressure. But Knights... Or Cavalier, in this case, because Red's upgrading them, would be the play. Great against Slingers, great against Eagles. Look at all the production buildings from Red. 109 villagers. Still plenty of gold. If these stables get queued up with Cavalier soon, that would be a really strong army. Blue, no elite Eagle yet, so these are still Castle Age Eagles. Red repairing, and now the Cavalier are in queue. Nice job from Red. Also, guys, Blue has zero defensive castles. <laughs> like, if this doesn't pan out for Blue and Red chooses to attack Blue, that's not going to be good. <laughs> I like Blue's strat. Blue is like, we will take out the town center so the town bell has no power. Actually, a really good strategy. But the Cavalier here, Cavalier wreck Castle Age Eagles. Goodbye. Those eagles run to their death. Very costly on gold, these eagles. There's also champion, too. Champion Cavalier versus Eagle Warriors. Goodbye, eagles. But goodbye starting TC for red. Goodbye castle for red. And blue's pressure still working. Blue's probably like, crap, I fought before elite eagle. Actually, castle's not down yet. Is there a chance for red? Where's red gonna go? Red sees this. Oh, this is about to get crazy, man. 
That's that's wild. I was not expecting a player like Red to try and split here. But this is so smart. Sending some units here and then sending the rest here is, is really good stuff. The Eagle's getting some kills, but maybe the Trebs will go down. Oh, blue! Blue! Right now, the, I'm just obviously blue's losing vills. This is what blue's doing. Hurrah! Focus here, produce, push, 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 push. That's all blue's looking at. Blue's not looking at this because blue's had no reason to look at the main eco because red's been turtling up behind houses this whole time. But red is the master turtler. And blue now is going to need to get some type of army production here. I still am not sure. Oh, no. Blue noticed. Blue noticed. Blue is getting how? Blue is sending pikes back. And now... The <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know blue would do it as well. But <laughs> blue also rings the down bell. Red suddenly gains a lot of respect for the opponent and says, You know what? I sympathize. We'll, we'll run away. We'll just, we'll just leave if that town bell is run. But the town bell has power. I, obviously, Red's looking for Vils. Red does not know there's not anything here. Red is looking for Vils. It it feels silly, obviously, to see the Cavalier run away. But, you know, Blue's got to go hunt that down anyways. He's actually sending Eagles to go do that. Red is now coming back. Castle went down for Red. What a game, guys. Red's population is nuts. Love to see Red find some stone. Still feel like Blue's long-term is maybe better here, despite being down by 40 villagers. Red's going to take the fight. Now there's Halbs in here. And those Halbs will kill the Cavalier in time. Meanwhile, push coming here, but there's suddenly no Halbs. There are Arbalest, though. There are Eagles. There are Monks. There are Slingers. There's the whole Incan variety here. But Champions and Cavalier. And it's mainly... Units that are very weak against champions here for blue. So those champions are going to get the job done. Shout out to these slingers in the back, though, for getting 10 kills right now. That's a really nice clear up. This is a nice clear up from blue. We've got Paladin on the way for red. Unbelievable. And I mean, red's farming eco is still kind of safe. The champions push into the two castles, though. That's going to scare red. And now, Red's starting to lose some important access to the middle because Blue has army rushing towards the middle after clearing up the raid. Now, they don't know the difference in eco situation. Blue, like, right now, Red might assume, based on how this game is playing, that the opponent has had more gold in the middle, which is true, and has the relics, which is obviously true. So, we see how good this could be for Red. But they don't know that. So that's really important to keep that in mind. The score does not indicate here any of those things. Oh, man. The Skirmisher is actually helping out a bit here. The Champions, too. Paladin will be in in 25 seconds. That castle from Blue is such a big one. Right next to the production buildings from Red. Red is not focused on the middle right now. Red wants to, to kill this. But how? Red doesn't have a castle anymore to make Trebs, guys. That castle from Red was so important here. Obviously, champions take a good trade here, but at the end of the day, they will die. And look at areas to get gold right now. There's this gold for Red. He's about to fully mine this. Those are the only villagers on gold for Red. Red is about to be completely out of gold. <laughs> but is making five Bombard Cannons. Out of some of these siege workshops. So these are the most important units in the game for Red. Once Red has them. And I I mean it's tough. When you have a castle next to your production buildings. Players are going to produce out of these buildings. And the castle will kill some units. Wow. Red's a macro god though. Look at that. That was fast. Yeah. Holy crap Machado. Halbs could use the final armor for Blue. Blue's only at 58 villagers. But Blue is producing a lot. Also, the, the Arbalest could use the final attack. Guys, those farms are fine. Don't be so judgy. It's fine. Handcart's in. It's fine. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, the Skirms for Red as well also are missing upgrades. So they're, they're both kind of missing important upgrades here. The Skirm should not do all that well, actually, with those upgrades missing. 
and zero on gold for red. Red is producing halves and skirms. And that could open up the opportunity for these eagles to do really well. Again, if these barracks end up producing, there's arbs and there's castle fire there. The castle already has a kill. Red is pulling the bomber cannons back. Can red hold here? Like, if you hold this and maybe push this castle, that might actually be the way to do it. This is a crazy game. Like, the skirms are doing a decent enough job. Still, so many upgrades missing for the skirms, but... It costs food, which he has, and wood, which he has. Gold, obviously, he does not. If this bomber cannon could see these trebs, that could be nice. I think red did notice it. Or maybe he's trying to run away. Bomber cannon will go down. I don't know, guys. Blue's had consistent pressure. Blue actually has access to gold. Blue has relics. It would be pretty crazy for red to be able to pull this one out now, I feel. Obviously, these cannons are the key. But missing upgrades here on the skirms and the halbs is not instilling confidence for me in red. Blue kind of played the game as I think it was designed to take the middle early with town centers, secure the gold, push the sides. Red also still has so many resources to maybe spend here. It's hard to think about upgrades in these moments. But eventually, you should be thinking upgrade check. So it's like, you think, oh shoot, I didn't get that blacksmith upgrade. You know what I should check as well? Eco upgrade. You, you just toggle through. So, it, it, you know, pros you're gonna see get a lot of upgrades at similar times. Oh my god, Red just is getting bloodlines and is going to make 21 scouts with the Teutons. The Teutons do not get even like Cav. And well, there's not a ton of armor there, so I don't think the scouts are going to be a whole lot better. I have seen Teuton scouts win games before, though, so... Uh-oh! Blacksmith has been spotted. All right, that's an upgrade. Red also producing more vills this whole time, but is losing some of these TCs. I wonder if the scouts just get clicked in there randomly for the traps. Nice job from Blue. Now, Blue, you should be thinking like, I've taken this position, maybe I castle it. Or maybe if you feel like you've taken that position with army, maybe you castle here. Maybe you secure more areas of the map. All easier said than done though. This game is like stupid hard and also super easy to, to look at it and, and say what someone should be doing, but... Hey, not one single person from the uh, 3k watching said go Tootin' Scouts to kill Trebs. And what is Red gonna do? Kill Trebs with Tootin' Scouts. Let's go, Machado. Let's go, Machado. Population lead. Army lead. Production off the off the uh, chain? No. I, I just... Uh, no. But this is amazing. Numbers the superior way to play it here. And that treble go down, the still cannons back here from red to maybe have a shot. Is there actually a chance here for red with no gold? Say goodbye to the trap. Uh, thank you, Nikki, for the prime. Thank you, Matt Damon. That, that is the actual Matt Damon, by the way. We go way back. Thanks for the 11 months. Not the actual Matt Damon. Thank you, Drago. Farland for 50 months. Death Zoom, or Death's Doom, sorry. Avashio, thank you everybody for the subs and support. Hope you're enjoying the game here on the stream. YouTube's going to get a kick out of this one later. This scout, actually, if put on attack stance, would probably kill 20 villagers and Blue would never realize. Imagine Blue's a little shell-shocked by what's happening right now. No way Red's actually winning this. What? There's two castles. <laughs> what? Holy crap. Uh, Blue's going to be desperate, too. Blue's going to click these cannons. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Click the cannons, and sometimes what players will do is they'll lose their whole army just to kill a cannon. But obviously, like, Blue's probably freaking out right now. Now, Elite Eagle is a great against skirmishers, but Blue can't get the numbers of them right now. And it's just a full skirm army from Machado. Wow, one of the castles is down. This is wild. Uh, you can tell Blue's so desperate. Blue's producing Kamiooks now. Like, maybe the Kamiooks can do it. 
No way. And the cam are not the answer. It would be elite eagle warriors what you need right here, right now. You would need numbers of them, though, because that's just a lot of skirmishers. And even if these units are doing one damage a hit, there's so many of them. There's 50 of them. Look, it's like enough of a halb meat shield. The skirms are actually killing the eagles just because red is so much. Now, blue's at 70 villagers. Uh, red has fallen to 75. Castle's going to go down. Oh, baby. Crop rotation. Red knows we're in for a long one here. Needs those farms to last longer. 77 skirms on the field for red. And red could still probably make like 50 more. Now, also blue is pushing here. So with that trev, which is really good. Blue is also up to 24 eagles. It, it, this is a problem for red. A lot of players will base their decisions on what has worked for them in the past. And Red just basically won a battle with unupgraded Teuton Skirms when Eagles were there. So Red is probably like, dang, okay, Skirms counter Eagles. Let's make more Skirms. And as you can see, when the numbers are there, that is not going to be good. The Skirmishers are going down. Blue knew what was going on here. And now the Bombard Cannons are gone. And for the first time in, in like forever, maybe the entire game, honestly, blue passes red in total population. The eco counts are similar and there's no answer to this many elite eagles. Still four relics in that monastery back here for blue. Still access to gold, still access to stone, still having some castles on the field. And maybe Machado was just a little bit too defensive. And it ended up costing him. But I can fully understand why they're basically the same elo here. Because for as good as blue is with the aggression, red's eco balance is really good. If, if this was a map where there was an extra gold pile in the back, I think red wins maybe. Because remember, at the top of the hill where red spent most of the time didn't have a lot of gold here. But if you run out of gold against a sieve that can make eagles, you're going to be in a really tough spot. So, all right. I mean, Red brought it back before. Red's clearly not quitting here. Um, you know, still expanded some of the farms here. Actually, he's built a castle. I don't know where that stone came from. Castle could help hold. Also, like, it's sad there's no gold income because if there was a little... Five or six Teutonic Knights in the mix with Skirms would do a lot. Because the Teutonic Knights are extremely good against the Eagles. Still this scout. Just over here on the wood line. Uh, I'm being texted by Lorena. Mm. Alright, chat. So, I'm not a very spontaneous individual. My lady requests or asks if I want to go get a margarita in an hour and a half. What do you think? Should I go get a margarita in an hour and a half? Wow! Look at you! You guys are saying yes? What? People who enjoy entertainment encouraging person to stop providing entertainment? Huh. All right, chat. I appreciate that. I, I really do. I, as crazy, as, as jokingly as I said that, I appreciate that. Do you guys feel bad because I once, because I recently told the story about how I was two hours late to a to the dinner that we had set up for my parents meeting my now fiance's parents. I still can't believe you guys let me do that. Two hours late. We pushed it back two hours because of an Age of Empires cast. You guys now feel bad about that and so you're like trying to even it out? <laughs> it's not entertaining enough, T90? Oh, okay, okay. Well, that that's more like it. Uh-oh. Blue did the upgrade check. Blue did the upgrade check, and that final armor upgrade is going to be a big one here. <laughs> Red did the eco check. 
<laughs> also, why is blue here with Vils? What? That's an interesting strategy, blue. Don't know why you're here. But actually, he's found quite a lot of scouting here. Let's see. Let me ask Twitch chat. I'm going to let her sit on that one for 10 minutes. Because she's going to assume that's a no. She might show up in chat. Who knows? More upgrades coming in for red. Adding armor to the skirms, I'm not sure is going to help all that much. But red did get bodkin, which red didn't have before. But blue's just got such a strong army in comparison. It is really tough to stop this. And again, gold access is kind of important. Interesting that Blue's making a monastery here, of all things. Maybe it could be a misclick, but feels like that's with intention. And will Blue go for the kill here? Red's got a big arm, you guys. You know, the Teuton, the, the extra little armor you get with Teutons could help a little bit. Halbs aren't the worst against Eagles. Is there a chance? Is there actually a chance for Red? Red's got the population lead again. Are you kidding me? There's no way, right? That is a bad fight for blue. The halbs are going to die. Red has 60 skirms again. Now, blue isn't killing this with eagles. Blue is making monks there, which is interesting use of gold. I'm sure blue is feeling very confident right now. Blue is up against Tootin Skirmishers, and Blue is a big understander of the tech tree. So probably thinks there's no way I can lose. Now that relic is back there. Maybe Blue spotted it, which is why the, the monks are being made, but I didn't think Blue actually scouted it. Blue! Blue! Have you had one too many margaritas? Like, my fate is for this evening? Because I'll tell you what, buddy. It sure seems like it. This is, you're down to 100 pop right now. You've got full control, but you've got to control your mind. Control your fingers, control your decisions. Don't convert the enemy economy. <laughs> That's the strategy. That's how you're planning on spending gold. Blue's like, man, this person's economy is so strong. I don't understand it. I mean, on paper, red is winning because of an excellent economy. So if you take away the economy, Red's not going to be able to win anymore. So honestly, to those who have it, please salute Blue. Redemption! Is he going to convert the lumber camps? Actually, Blue, I take it back. I, what do I say all the time? It's not about winning. It's about winning with style. You're winning with style here, okay? I can't judge it. Now, I think Eagles are going to join the party too. I mean, this is where... This is the only location Red is getting wood, guys. It is that bad. I, I still don't think... Like, I, I mean, as much as Red has stayed afloat here, that Red is going to be able to get this done. Especially if Blue sends Eagles. Red noticed this and is fighting off that villager. But it's an Incan villager that's affected by blacksmith upgrades. Big Manganel here. Boom! Oh, big shots. Okay, so a lot of skirms go down. But, I mean, we've said that a million times at this point. Clearly, the skirm lives are not valued in Red's economy. Oh, let's go, Blue! <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, there you go. So now Blue is converting the buildings. Not bad. Um, here there's a castle going up. This castle might be denied. No way. This is the only castle that Blue could afford at this point. It's actually going to be extremely close. I think it might go up because of the Incan armor. Depends on if Red actually clicked every villager here. Obviously, there's eagles here too, right? So this will still mean there's going to be some losses. And yeah, now Halbs are headed here. I think this is going to be the end for poor Machado, who did deny this castle. And is actually bringing a ram over to maybe even ram down the fan foundation, but... Red has never had a plan to to push. I mean, there th that's not true. There was a plan, but the Bombard Cannons were maybe a little too late. Remember that castle that went down for Red? That was so devastating. 
Blue's population looking better and better. Let's see, did I get a response from her? She said, ha, 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 okay. To me saying that Twitch chat would, would decide. They've decided I'm apparently past my best because they were very willing to let me leave. Margs, it is. There you go, chat. That's what you told me. I was expecting begging and screaming and crying. I appreciate it, though. Big Manganel shots again. Skirmishers dying. Come on, Machado. Give it up, my friend. You have, like, very little access to wood. Your villagers are being poked to death. Machado still keeps building buildings. Machado still keeps spamming. Still has the food. No stables to make scouts anymore, though. <laughs> what a funny game. Honestly, like, this is, like, super close. If blue would have taken slightly worse engagements... Honestly, if red wouldn't have had holes in those freaking houses... You know, maybe red has a little bit more in Castle Age, and, and red finally can get a push together, but... It was like, blue always had the correct amount of pressure. It was just enough. And obviously had some nice control and, and eventually just stuck with it. What a fun game. And kicks as we encourage spontaneity. Yeah, like I said, I'm not the most spontaneous person. I've been trying to get better at that the last couple years. And Listen, I've got one more stream tomorrow before we go down for the holidays. I spent 10 hours yesterday recording YouTube videos for when I'm gone. Some margaritas might be good. It's Taco Tuesday. Ooh, I didn't think about that. Ooh, that's true. All right, uh, live viewers, if you can guess the population of red when this game ends, I'm not sure what I'll do, but try and guess because red is really not giving up. I'm going to say 49. It's at 82 right now. Um... How's this? If you're not subbed and you guess it, I'll give you a sub. But I would... Ooh, that's an, that's actually bad, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to verify that. But actually, I can. I can. Just remember your guess. Red is still producing skirmishers and halves. Red goes diving deep here for the trebs. Won't be able to get all the trebs. And... Wow, a lot of first messages here, guys. 12 people messaging for the first time. People really want that sub, I guess. But I say 49. There's no wood income for blue, be except for that one villager, which is now dead. So there's no ability to make skirms or halps. Could make some Teutonic Knights. Oh, God. Bought more wood. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Machado's like, I, I brought in these resources. Damn it. I'm going to spend them. We spend our resources around here. I mean, you have wood and food now. Oh my god, Machado! What is this? Machado is gonna reboom. That's not what I thought you were doing. I thought you were just gonna get wood to maybe make some skirmishers, my friends. Okay. Halb's in defense. The reboom is on for Machado. Oh man, and they've got three halbs, the most trusted halbs in all the land over here to defend. Are you kidding me? All right. Never say die. Um, I mean, higher ranks, players would get annoyed because the person's dragging the game out. At this rank, do you guys think blue cares? Blue doesn't... Blue's having fun. This game's hard, man. This game is hard. It's like so difficult to play this one. And so when you've actually when you have the win locked, being able to slowly destroy your opponent over time is a great feeling, I think. Again, at like more competitive ranks, and I think then people get salty and get annoyed. But there's levels to this. That would be my guess. Also, thanks for all the new subs that just came in. Thank you, Charco. Thank you, Kirky on Twitch. Thank you, Matu. Couple Twitch primers. Whoa, what the Machado, you didn't finish the TC. You got to go back. What the? 
Machado, there's no wood there anymore. The scout gave you false intel. It, the map was 300 years old. You didn't look at the date on it, Machado. No. And Machado resigns, realizing that that was old information from this stupid scout who was forgotten for good reason and uh, figures it's time to call it quits. 64. What did I say? I said, I think I said 49. Yeah. But Red realizes, well, maybe I can't reboom back into this one. But honestly, a really good game. Both players played amazing. Their ELO is 831 versus 832. And we saw that extra one ELO there from Valen Kasla. Uh, and it was, I think, the aggression. Um, I do feel for Red. It was super funny to see the holes in the houses. Um, so I feel for Red because I think Red is a player who thrives with being safe. And it was hard for Red to be safe because that was being, like, that was a frustrating thing. But. And again, I think maybe on a different map where there's a little bit more gold at their base, um, red probably builds up towards something more than just trash. But unfortunately, red was not able to do that. And also, Eagle Warrior is like one of the better units against just Halbs and Skirms, which, you know, maybe if red's not playing against Incas, that doesn't end up happening. We, we established, I think blue is just the faster player here, right? Red was very chill. But what red does do is select all TC... Um, okay, now people are saying 64 in the chat. You freaking trolls. Um, select all TC and create villagers. Red did a fantastic job at that. Total villagers created in that game, 154. Blue is just at 105. So regardless of how bad the situation got, Red was creating more vills. It was just the lack of upgrades in army, which was tricky. And it's easy to make that mistake when you're being pressured like Blue was pressuring. We had the one villager castle on the side. That was the, the bulk of the main push. And blue controlled so much stone and gold towards the middle. So I don't know when this is going to hit YouTube in the future, but this is like the first time today I really had a Loey the Legends cast, which I feel is actually going to end up going to YouTube. So I will say this. Um, YouTube, this is my last Loey the Legends cast, at least officially in terms of live time, of 2023 because people here voted that I'm going to go have a uh, margarita so um actually i might be able to do one more anyways if it is my last loey the legends cast of 2023 um i hope you enjoyed loey the legends this year and i hope you have a good 2024 so thank you for all the support and for putting up with me for so long thank you